Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the live streaming of morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this Friday, the 5th of March, 2021. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. Beginning next week, this service will be streamed live exclusively on Zoom. To participate in the live service, go to goodshepvirtual.org, click on prayer and study, and then click on the link. The service leaflet for this morning's service is also available on this page. Just look for today's date. This service will also be available beginning at least by 10 a.m. on all of Good Shepherd's communication channels. Facebook, YouTube, and the prayer and study page of goodshepvirtual.org. Well, good morning, Letty, and good morning, Pam and Bob uh, on Zoom, and good morning, Nancy on uh, Facebook. Good to see you this morning. So today being a Friday in Lent, we will, as we have done the past two, week, two weeks, uh, we will be uh, saying Psalm 95 in, in its entirety, and also the supplication in lieu of the general thanksgiving and the prayer of St. Chrysostom. So there you have it. Good morning, Joan May, good to see you too. And good morning, Wendy, on Zoom. This is quite uh, a feat. So good to see you too, uh, Wendy. <clears throat> well, with that, why don't we begin? Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm this morning is Psalm 95, Venite Exaltamus Domino, which we shall say in its entirety. Let us say Psalm 95 together in unison. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God 
and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts, as your forebears did in the wilderness, at Meribah, and on that day at Massa. When they tempted me, they put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 69. We shall say the psalm omitting only verses 24 through 30, and we shall say the psalm in unison. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O oh God of Israel. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire, do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Be near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. You know my reproach my shame and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat. And when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O God, will lift me up on high. I will praise the name of God in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy 
and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is, again, from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. And in this reading, uh, he discovers that no, not a single person is righteous in God's sight. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and take note. Search its squares and see if you can find one person who acts justly and seeks the truth, so that I may pardon Jerusalem. Although they say, as the Lord lives, yet they swear falsely. O Lord, do your eyes not look for the truth. You have struck them, but they have felt no anguish. You have consumed them, but they refuse to take correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to turn back. Then I said, these are only the poor. They have no sense, for they do not know the way of the Lord, the law of their God. Let me go to the rich and speak to them. Surely they know the way of the Lord, the law of their God but they all alike had broken the yoke. They had burst the bonds. Therefore, a lion from the forest shall kill them. A wolf from the desert shall destroy them. A leopard is watching against their cities. Everyone who goes out of them shall be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many, their apostasies are great. How can I pardon you? Your children have forsaken me and have sworn by those who are no gods. When I fed them to the full, they committed adultery and trooped to the houses of prostitutes. They were well-fed lusty stallions, each neighing for his neighbor's wife. Shall I not punish them for all these things, says the Lord? And shall I not bring retribution on a nation such as this? the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament canticle this morning is a song of penitence Kyrie Pantocrator, which we shall say together in unison. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you, have, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O oh Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. 
unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, and in it, he makes the distinction between the outward physical uh, keeping of the law and the inward keeping of the law. And it is a wonderful argument uh, and uh, one that I find very compelling. So listen closely. Circumcision indeed is of value if you obey the law. But if you break the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. So if those who are uncircumcised keep the requirements of the law, will not their uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Then those who are physically uncircumcised but keep the law will condemn you who have the written code and circumcision but break the law. For a person is not a Jew who is one outwardly nor is true circumcision something external and physical. Rather, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and real circumcision is a matter of the heart. It is spiritual and not literal. Such a person receives praise, not from others, but from God. Then what advantage has the Jew, or what is the value of circumcision? much in every way. For in the first place, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some were unfaithful? Were the, will, their unfaithfulness, will their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Although everyone is a liar, let God be proved true as it is written, so that you may be justified in your words and prevail in your judging. But if our injustice serves to confirm the justice of God, what should we say? That God is unjust to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way. By no means. For then how could God judge the world? But if through my falsehood, God's truthfulness abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? And why not say, as some people slander us by saying that we say, let us do evil so that good may come. Their condemnation is deserved. What then? Are we any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one who is righteous, not even one. There is no one who is understanding, and there is no one who seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. There is no one who shows kindness. There is not even one. And their throats are open graves. They use their tongues to deceive. And the venom of vipers is under their lips. And their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness, and their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery are in their paths, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament canticle is a song to the Lamb, which we shall say together in unison. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. 
and yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Day is the Collect for the Second Sunday in Lent. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the un unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled, as to console, to be understood, as to understand, to be loved, as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and that it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, 
remembering today especially the Diocese of Asante Mangpong, West Africa, the Most Reverend Cyril Kobina Ben Smith, Bishop and Metropolitan, and the Diocese of St. Asaph, Wales, the Right Reverend Gregory Cameron, Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and his wife, Kate, and the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, Presiding Bishop and Primate. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Marie, Carlos, Lisa, Nancy, Carol, Jackie, Arnie, Tammy, Alden and family, Amanda, Brian and family, Howard, Catherine, Melissa, Philip, Shannon, Bob and Audrey, Rob, Carolyn, Roger, Phil, Dennis, Sean, Marie, Keith, Patricia, Grace, Lori, Karen, George and family, Wendy, Rick, and Mirabelle. We pray also today for ministries of current activity, remembering especially our Lenten program, that the members of Good Shepherd may, in spirit, make their pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And our Lenten outreach project, that the residents of the village of Bondo, Haiti, and the students of Bon Samaritan School may receive physical and spiritual nourishment and may know that the, the love of the members of Good Shepherd toward them. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. Good morning, Pete and Julie. Good to see you this morning and good morning, Kathy. Thank you for joining us this morning. So Joan May asks our prayers for the Millinor family in Atlanta who meet together today to plan for Bob M's hospice care as he succumbs to major brain injury from his fall last Friday. Well, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry, Joan May. So why don't we pray for those whom we love? Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Letty asks our prayers for all nurses and doctors and all frontline workers, and she gives thanksgiving for all vaccines. So why don't we pray for healthcare professionals, first line responders, and medical researchers. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing 
and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And this is a prayer for trust in God. O oh God, the source of all health, so fill our hearts with faith in your love that with calm expectancy, we may make room for your power to possess us and gracefully accept your healing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this is a prayer that very early on we said uh, during these morning prayer services. It was a, the original prayer that Doug, Father Doug said every morning. So let us say this is a prayer for the morning. This is another day, O Lord. We know not what it will bring forth, but make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If we are to stand up, help us to stand bravely. If we are to sit still, help us to sit quietly. If we are to lie low, help us to do it patiently. And if we are to do nothing, let us do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give us the spirit of Jesus. Amen. And I'd like to pray for families uh, this morning, including this church family that gathers so faithfully uh, on uh, weekday mornings. So, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you set the solitary in families. We commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we pray, every root of bitterness, the desire of vain glory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who in holy wedlock have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to the parents and so enkindle fervent charity among us all that we may evermore be kindly affectioned one to another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And on this beautiful, clear, cold morning, cold, Florida cold, it was in the 50s this morning when I got up, let us uh, pray for joy in God's creation. O oh, Heavenly Father, you have filled the whole world with beauty. Open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue with the supplication. O Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. O God, we have heard with our ears, and our fathers have declared unto us the noble works that thou didst in their days and in the old time before them. O God, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. From our enemies, defend us, O Christ. Graciously behold our afflictions. With pity, behold the sorrows of our hearts. Mercifully forgive the sins of thy people. Favorably, with mercy, hear our prayers. O Son of David, have mercy upon us. Both now and ever vouchsafe to hear us, O Christ. Graciously hear us, O Christ, 
Graciously hear us, O Lord Christ. Let us pray. We humbly beseech thee, O Father, mercifully to look upon our infirmities and for the glory of thy name, turn from us all those evils which we have most justly deserved and grant that in all our troubles, we may put our whole trust and confidence in thy mercy and evermore serve thee in holiness and pureness of living to thy honor and glory through our only mediator and advocate, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning for morning prayer on this Friday, the 5th of March. It's amazing that it's already March, isn't it? Uh, we are coming up to the uh, one year anniversary of when we uh, shut down. Uh, if I remember uh, correctly, um, the Shea Youth Group dinner was supposed to be on uh, the 13th of March and that was on a Saturday. And uh, we shut down on the Friday before that on the 12th. So that's a week today. So that's an amazing uh, thing to think about right now. So remember again, that beginning next week, we will be live streaming on Zoom. Look for the new link on the prayer and study website next week. And I'll send out a bulk email to the faithful with the link as well, just, just so that you have it uh, at your disposal. And uh, this, this will be in a webinar format. Uh, so uh, uh, you will not uh, be able to break in, which is good when we have like 15, 20 people on as opposed to when we only have like seven or eight on uh, Zoom. And, uh, and, but you will be able to make your, uh, your, your presence known and just, just like you do on Facebook and uh, your prayers and intercessions through the chat feature. So look forward to that. So again, have a great weekend. And as always, as you go forth into the world today and you greet your neighbors, be kind to them. One never knows what burden they are bearing. Amen.